Hey, we're the Warriors. In this video, we're talking about the increasing threat for a potential nor'easter in the East Coast into southeastern Canada. In this video, I've been following a distinct wave pattern, and this is the type of look we are looking for when it comes to nor'easters. I'm going to be talking about track timing, location, and a feature that could make or break the nor'easter potential in this episode of Weather Decoded TV. All right, guys, what we're looking at is the upper levels here, the jet stream, as we head towards mid-December, 1216 to 1218 is the time period we're looking at. And you can see these little dips in the uh, jet stream. These are troughs. In between is we have a ridge. The troughs are the areas where we're going to get our storm systems typically, where you see these black lines kind of diverge in these jet streaks where the winds are at 120 miles an hour up in the jet stream here. Our low pressure systems will typically form right along these jet streaks. You can see there's one out here in uh, California it could be delivering some nice snow out there in mid-December. And then also right on the east coast, right along the coastline, that upper level divergence creates lift at the surface, that stretching in the upper levels, and that can create a low pressure system to develop off the coast. There's a lot of warm waters off the coast, so that creates a nice temperature gradient as well. So this is a feature we're really looking at when we see this type of look. There's a lot of upper level energy. It's not closed off, but that will change as it moves to the east. That's our upper level wave. And now we're looking at the precipitation for December 16th at 1 a.m. So that's a Wednesday. We see a low pressure system now developing off the coast here of about South Carolina. There's an old low pressure system that was moving from the plains now into Kentucky. These two systems could merge and really strengthen as we head towards the northeast here. You can see your uh, thickness lines right here. There's a gradient set up. There's a lot of these kind of, you know, you can see them tightly packed together from about Florida to the Canada US border. And that low pressure systems right in that zone, that temperature gradient. And so that could really, we could have some frontal systems that develop here and really feed this thing. This is the thing we're looking at here. This is the chart. This is a important chart because this is the Arctic Oscillation. And when it gets negative like that, it can indicate that the potential for Arctic air to spill into the U.S. really increases. And you can see December 16th through 18th, that's kind of when the peak of the negative Arctic Oscillation occurs. So when it gets negative like that, the NAO is also forecasted to be negative around the 16th as well. So that is favorable for nor'easters. However, the PNA, this is the Pacific and we're looking at it out, out west here. The Pacific isn't quite as favorable. It's kind of good at forecast to be neutral. And I'll show you what that means here. This is the pool of cool air, the, your little trough. These are our height anomalies out here in the east coast. You can see the ridging here just to the east of that trough. You can see the negative NAO up here, up near Greenland. This ridging essentially pushes down the Arctic air from the poles up here. That's what we need for these uh, really cold nor'easters. You know, we got a little bit of cool air here, but the issue is that PNA I was talking about, and really to the, the west coast here, there is a trough sitting right here and a ridge just to the east of the trough and the, tr the ridge out to the west really isn't all that strong. We'd like to see it a little bit stronger to also push that cold air down. So you get a trough to the, to the east and one to the west, but this one's kind of weak, so that cold air isn't quite getting pushed down. It's getting pushed down to the west. And because of that, we kind of have a, a ridge in between. That's going to limit the cold air for this nor'easter just a little bit. But will it limit it enough? That's what we'll talk about here. As we head towards the 17th at 1 a.m., so one day later, you can see that piece of energy moves to the east. We've got really decent positive vorticity advection here off the coast. Now, what's that going to do to the actual storm system? Let's take a look. And wow, there we go. That is on the 16th at around 7 p.m. So Thursday, it's Wednesday into Thursday uh, morning here. And you can see the low pressure system sitting right off of uh, Pennsylvania, New York, and that's delivering some pretty decent snow according to the GFS. Now, guys, this is going to change. We're still far out, but we're just taking a look inside look at this. And you can see the 540 line, your rain to snow line is set up all the way from the Dakotas down to Mini uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas, 
and it hugs right into that low pressure system right along the coast. And that delivers almost everyone in the Northeast from about the coast inwards a chance at some snow. Again, this, can't, this is gonna change, but there has been some increasing indications of this. And you can see your cold front sitting right there and uh, your 540 line just a little bit north of that. As we head towards the 17th now at 1 p.m., you can see the low pressure system continues to deepen. So windy conditions with those tightly packed isobars, but it's off the coast now, but it is delivering the, uh, the coastline some snow as well. You can see on the 17th here at 1 p.m., this low closes off the upper level piece of energy with a really significant positive vorticity advection. This is a classic look of a, a classic comma head type of appearance or a, a just a classic nor'easter type of look when you get that closed off look. This is the Canadian model. So we're looking at a different model now and you can see it's pretty similar. It's just a little bit farther to the north. That rain to snow line again is off to the north, typically with a classic winter storm, that rain to snow line is a little bit farther wrapped into it. And you can see we're dealing with those cold air issues that I was talking about. But uh, there might be a little bit more with this system than there was with that previous nor'easter a week or so ago. But the nor'east, uh, the Canadian is definitely forecasting that. Here's the ECMWF. The, mo uh, the uh, European computer model, and this is a uh, 1216, 1217 at, at around 1 a.m. So overnight on Wednesday, you can see the low pressure system just off the coast. It's around the same as the GFS, and there's your rain to snow line. And this is uh, uh, indicating some sleet, maybe some mixed precipitation. And your heaviest snow will just form just north of that rain to snow line. And that's right off the coast. You're talking Massachusetts, Connecticut maybe even Rhode Island, uh, all the way up to New York, New Hampshire, Vermont, maybe even up to Maine with this type of system, even out to Pennsylvania. So we got a, a pretty good snow band on the uh, European computer model and the trends have been up. And you look at the uh, GFS, look how similar that is. They're in the, really the same location, almost the same strength. GFS is just a little bit too the uh, east here and so this is the gfs you can see snow for everyone from the coastline inwards it's been a while since we've seen something like that i mean almost every uh, nor'easter that comes up it's it's maine and southeast canada but things are things could change i mean if you go back a couple of runs ago the gfs was pegging that same area that got the nor'easter a couple weeks ago so th this very well could change guys and, and but uh the threat is there again for this really the nor'easter uh the northeast location in general so th that's why we're, what we're looking at right now we're just looking at the signal the amounts the track that could change but right now the general consensus has been to kind of track the low right along the coast so maybe a little farther north than what this has said but uh and give areas really just inland up into southeast canada a decent snow event but there has been a slight eastward trend so this is something we're watching here this is the column max temperature and and this is the maximum temperature from the surface to the mid levels you can see it's 32 degrees right there or zero degrees celsius and if we go back and look at that that would uh, put that area right there so you can see that south of that 32 degree line it's actually warmer in some levels of the atmosphere. So that would indicate a very wet, sloppy snow. But look, that's really off the ocean. So we'll have to watch that. Again, there, there's a little bit of an issue with warm air with the system, but maybe not quite as much as that previous storm. And this is the GFS. This is uh, Thursday at 1 p.m. You can see that low pressure system now tracking off the coast. Now, this is uh, something that's going to change, but, it, you know, the European has forecasted a decent amount of snow with this thing, a foot plus. Again, this is way too early for amounts, guys. We're just looking at this for fun. This is an educational channel. We sometimes look behind the scenes, but you can see the GFS and uh, the uh, European are very similar here. This is a zoomed in view of the GFS and then the Euro. So look how similar that track is. They're almost dead on. And that's uh, pretty remarkable for this time out. You even see the snow up in Canada from previous storm, just about the exact same. So 
That is remarkable consistency. However, if you look at the previous run of the GFS, so this was the latest one, and then this one's a couple of runs ago, and you can see it's a much different story. It's really pegging the northeastern United States. This area up here is a previous storm overlapping with this storm, but it does give southeast portions of Canada one to two feet. So there is significant uncertainty in terms of the actual track of this nor'easter but the signal appears to be there that you're going to see a decent storm right up the coast somewhere uh, around a week around uh, the 12 16 to 12 uh, 18 or so time period so the signal is there however mounts will change guys but we're definitely definitely looking at seeing some signs that there could be a decent uh, storm again the biggest issue would be that cold air that i was talking about in the northeastern united states there's a little bit of a ridging pattern happening there you'd like to see more of a ridge come up there and punch down some cold air uh, but nonetheless when you get a wave like this right along the coast with those very warm waters out to the east a negative nao and a negative arctic oscillation it is a signal that you could have a decent storm track up somewhere along the coast so Stay tuned, guys. I'll be definitely making more updates for you guys on this video and even post some snowfall uh, accumulation maps as we get closer, if it appears that this snow will track in the northeastern United States or southeastern Canada. The trend right now has been just, just off to the east-northeast, so we'll have to watch that. So stay tuned, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for if you like videos like this and uh, hit those bell notifications so that you can get those videos up to date right away when they come out hot, hot off the press. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you soon.